This Avalanche Safety Report is brought to you by Mountain TV. Learn more at mtn-tv.com. Welcome to the weekly Avalanche Safety Report. I am here with Brian Lazar from the CAIC. Happy New Year, Brian. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Happy New Year to you too, Alan. Excellent. Excellent. Well, we've got a lot to talk about. A lot of new snow. A lot of new snow. We're all grateful to see your, you know, return of some real winter, um, really good, you know, riding conditions in the backcountry though. But uh, because of that December dry spell, our snowpack was very fragile and just is not able to handle the load we've gotten over about the last 10 or 11 days. And so we have very dangerous avalanche conditions. What I'm showing here is our homepage map from Thursday, which was the very end of our warning period, which started around the Christmas holiday. So we've had a week of very dangerous conditions with avalanche warnings throughout much of the northern and central mountains. Those are set to expire um, by Friday. But as we move into the weekend, we're going to have all of these areas of orange, which is considerable avalanche danger or level three out of five. And the conditions are very dangerous, about as dangerous or the most dangerous conditions we've seen all season. And there's a few reasons for that. One, we've got avalanches taking place in nearly all of our mountain ranges. You can see here, this is just avalanche activity over the last week. And you can see it's everywhere from the Wyoming border down into the San Juan Mountains. That's 455 avalanches we've recorded in just the last week. And what's most worrisome is 40% of those, or nearly 200, are big enough to bury, injure, or kill a person. And as the avalanche rows in the lower right shows down here, the avalanches are occurring on nearly all aspects and elevations with the exception of low elevation southerly. To make this even scarier, the avalanches are now starting to break near the ground in many places. So these are the biggest avalanches that we've seen all season and they're being triggered from very long distances, hundreds of feet away, in some cases more than a thousand feet away. So here's just an example of an avalanche that was triggered by that skier up on that flat slope. So hundreds feet away, and you can see you get this avalanche to break near the ground. Um, these avalanches are certainly big enough to you know, kill a person. And so because the snowpack is so tender, people need to give essentially most slopes deeper than around 30 degrees, very wide buffers to handle this unpredictability. Now, this seems to be a clear example of somebody skiing in the backcountry. And typically backcountry enthusiasts carry beacons and shovels and you know all the safety equipment. If you're skiing on a, a resort property, for example, steamboat resort up here, should you be carrying a beacon or other safety equipment? You know, it never hurts to, you know, wear a transceiver, you know, even if you're inside the ski area, but the conditions inside ski area boundaries are very, very different. You've got dedicated ski patrols and snow safety teams, which work to reduce the threat from avalanches inside ski area boundaries. You know, it is mother nature and it's a natural environment, so you can never get the risk to zero, but they do a tremendous job getting the risk very close to zero inside the ski area boundaries. Soon as you're on the other side of the rope, immediately you are in backcountry avalanche train. It doesn't matter how close you are to chairlifts or ski area boundary lines. Um, you are in the backcountry and you can trigger avalanches like what we've seen in this video. And I just want to kind of emphasize how dangerous this stuff is. I mean, here is an example of a remotely triggered avalanche from where this photo is taken down near the snowmobile tracks. And you can see how widely this thing propagated. So it's the fact that we're triggering very large avalanches, the biggest ones we've seen all season from a distance and even from flat terrain. And here's one that ran up near the Eisenhower Tunnel on Mount Trelease. You can see all of the ski tracks down there in the trees, which is where this avalanche was triggered from. There were some lucky people here. This avalanche, you know, had it been a little bit bigger, could have run uh, the debris down into the flat terrain in the trees. And this is why we're emphasizing the need for very big buffers around steep slopes. I want people to really consider, you know, that their normal safe routes, the places they usually go in snowpack conditions are dangerous, may not be safe this weekend because of the combination of all these dangerous factors. The upside is Mother Nature is giving us very obvious signs of instability. You can see this avalanche in the background here, but in the foreground, it's more gentle terrain. So the slope did not slide, but it did crack. In this video from uh, Doug Evans here, uh, uh, a contributor, um, an observer in the backcountry, uh, you can just see how easy it is that storm snow to shed off the weak layer that developed in December. So you see snow conditions like this, it is obviously very dangerous. And your only real way to travel safely in the backcountry is to give most of these slopes steeper than around 30 degrees, a large buffer, and make sure you're very cognizant of any steep slopes overhead, even if they're hundreds of feet away. Wow, some really great info this week, Brian. Thank you so much. 
colorado.gov slash avalanche. You can always stay up to date there. Enjoy the backcountry and be sure to stay alert and stay safe.